So I wanted to make a book nook for a while, and I wanted to do this as a gift for my dad, who loves The Lord of the Rings. One of the, my earliest loves of books came from my dad reading us The Lord of the Rings at night. And uh, I wanted to give this as a gift for him, something he could put on his bookshelf. And I thought, when I looked at the uh, idea of a book nook, how it's kind of a cubby that sits on your shelf that you peer into, I wanted what would be a good thing for that. Uh, and I thought caves, I thought of Bilbo and Gollum possibly, I thought of Goblin Town, um, but I decided on the Dead of Dunharo because I just loved the models. Uh, I painted up the ghosts here uh, very briefly. This is not a painting channel, and I this, by no means is this a painting tutorial, but uh, did a quick uh, coat of, of hex ray flame on them and then a dry brush uh, to live, leave their armor white and their clothes green. I'm pretty happy with he, how he turned out, the King of the Dead. But I'm kind of coming at this project uh, blind. Uh, it was a one day project. Uh, I painted the guys in advance. I painted Aragorn and Legolas and Gimli and the ghosts in advance. And then on the day of the project, uh, I just sat down at eight in the morning and I worked until nine o'clock at night and, uh, just assembled the whole project in one day. And I'm really thrilled with how it turned out considering I didn't know what I was doing. I was making it up as I went. This little platform I'm building right now is kind of the cliff that they stand on. And then they're going to stand in front of the big facade where the King of the Dead comes out of as he is uh, kind of summoned forth by Aragorn. And uh, so I'm going to assemble that facade uh, of the kind of castle-like, tomb-like structure that he is in. Um, I put some, you'll see the tin foil ball here. I'm using foam that is just insulation foam called XPS foam. And uh, building the structure out of foam, using the tin foil ball to put some texture into the stone uh, to give it, to kind of take away that plain blank uh, flat surface and put some texture into it. But then I just kind of winged it. You can see I've got the laptop there. There's a movie on the laptop. It's Lord of the Rings and I'm watching it as I'm trying to put together this uh, thing. I'm a little uh, butterfingers here trying to put the stairs on, put everything together. But it comes together pretty well, making it up as I go. Um, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. Uh, it was kind of a uh, uh, interesting project. I've been working on so many uh, large display tables and I wanted something that would be smaller and something that uh, would be flexing new skills and skills that I haven't used before. So definitely the miniature skills, um, but also it brings in a little bit of electronics it brings in some woodworking as I build a box around it. Um, and all of this is, is new stuff. Uh, that's the door to the facade going on. Um, but now you can see it's all coming together. There's more spires. There's some windows. Putting more texture on there. Uh, and I'm really happy with how this came together. So now it is done. There's the facade. All of that texturing that I did is going to be for nothing because I end up uh, changing the way that I wanted to texture everything. Uh, and you would think it's a mistake, but I actually did it on purpose. But when we get there, I'll show you what I did. Um, so now I'm just positioning the models where I'll put them when uh, I finish the project. That's where they will stand, Legolas and Gimli and Aragorn and the Witch King. Not the Witch King, the uh, King of the Dead. That's the other wall on the opposite side. I built the little city there. Uh, the ghostly city uh, doesn't have very much, uh, I mean, it's very wispy in the movie. It doesn't have a lot of uh, really 
tangibility as to what it looks like. So I kind of made that up out of Roman and uh, and Greek and Gothic architecture, uh, just trying to figure out what would be good. So now this is the new texture for the foam. And like I said, it'll look like a mistake, but what I wanted to do was I wanted the uh, ghostly city to have a ghostly appearance. And so I said, well, you know, this foam gets eaten away by spray paint. And so if I spray it with spray paint, then it will give it this really pockmarked, uh, pitted appearance, and it'll look good for the, uh, for the ghostly city. And then I did it for the, I sprayed it on the ghostly city and it did, it looked good. But I also thought, you know, that looks like a pretty good stone uh, base also. And so I spray painted the foam for the stone. And I think that it looks like a pretty good stone uh, base once it gets dry brushed. Painted the city a ghostly green, the same green that I used for the, uh, for the ghosts themselves. It takes a lot of paint to get over that uh, very pitted and pockmarked thing, but it looks pretty good once it's all done together. It's gonna uh, float a little bit off of the wall. So now I put the lights in, and the lights were something kind of a, a big question mark for me because I didn't know, I don't know electronics. I've seen a lot of videos online for how to make book nooks and people have soldering irons and and USBs and things and I didn't know any of that and so I just got a short string of LED lights with three AAA batteries and uh, and I know you can trim these these strips of lights uh, but I decided that I was just going to line the lights along the base of the cliff there and then roll up the rest of the lights and put the rest of the lights in that wad uh, behind the mirror as I put in the mirror. There's a mirror that goes in on a 45 degree angle. What I'm putting in now right now are the posts that the ghosts are going to stand on as they kind of hover in the mist. I need something for them to stand on. So these are uh, uh, barbecue skewers that they're standing on and these are fiddly and, and I mess with these for a long time trying to get the ghosts to stand on the top of them. But you put in a 45 degree mirror at the back of the book nook and it will uh, make it look like it goes on for a, a long time in the back of the, a long distance. Um, and in this case, it'll make it look like there are twice as many ghosts and it'll make it look like that city is twice as big. And so uh, the mirror is important. Um, this was really fiddly with these uh, ghosts it was very hard to get ghosts to stand on the top of posts. Very hard to get the posts to stand up. Uh, I started to cross brace the posts a little bit with other posts. Um, and I ran into the problem of they just wouldn't stick to the top of wood skewers. So I had to break out the drill. That's what I'm doing right here is I'm drilling holes in the bottom of the ghosts so that they will stick on top of the posts. And this was an aggravating project. I'm probably showing too much footage of it, but it really got my goat for a while. Um, so there are all the ghosts in on all their posts. I'm putting in the last one now. And he looks pretty good. A couple of them are standing on the thing. I'm putting in the other side. And we're going to put in the mirror. Where the mirror goes. figuring all of this out. Like I said, this is my first time ever doing this and the measurements were all kind of by eye. Uh, I, I measured it against the height of another book so that I could figure out what size I wanted to make it. And then I guessed on the, the inside width of the box. Um, and it turned out pretty well. So this is how it looks before I put in the mist and before I assemble everything together, but you can see how that mirror really makes it look like those ghosts go back and the city goes back for a long ways. And I'm just really thrilled with how this came together. So now I put in the mist that the ghosts are in. And the mist that I use is batting. 
which is the uh, stuffing material that you stuff in teddy bears and pillows. Um, I bought it on Amazon and I thought I was buying, buying a small bag and I ended up buying an enormous bag that came in like, like a four foot by three foot box. Um, just this gigantic bag so I can make like five quilts worth of, of something and I ended up using a handful of batting. So if anyone needs batting, you can uh, come over to my house and get some batting. But uh, stuffed it in amongst the ghosts and stuffed it in behind the uh, uh, the ghostly city. This was a very fiddly process. Again, those ghosts are precariously balanced. And uh, fortunately the superglue did its work after a while and we got things in a little bit better tucking these in but I think the batting looks really good and, and once the batting is there underlit with the green LED lights uh, it really gives it a good ghostly look that I'm very happy with that together so good stuff so this is what it will look like in its finished form it's not finished yet it needs a wooden case around it which i'm not going to show making because i didn't film it because i am embarrassed by my woodworking skills but this is how it will look on the inside when it is complete and it just kind of goes back there and i love it I ended up taking a little bit of the batting out because it was obscuring the light too much. But uh, that is pretty much how it looks finished. We'll show you the finished project. This is the, uh, the front piece to it. So I built the wooden box around it, but I wanted something on the front uh, to uh, obviously hide the foam uh, edges and hide the seams of the wooden box and uh, I wanted it to be the uh, front piece that we see in the movie where Legolas goes up and reads the petroglyphs that say, the way is shut, it was made by those who are dead and the dead keep it, the way is shut. And so uh, I got that there, uh, I engraved those petroglyphs into the top of the foam and I got some skulls from the hobby store um, from their uh, from their Halloween collection and I painted up these little skulls just with some basic base paint and then gave them a wash and I'm going to tuck those into the little cubby holes of the uh, uh, pillstone pillars so it looks just like how it does in the movie and then it needed a uh, a title uh, not a title but like a plaque and uh, I wanted to hand paint that um, I'm not the best painter but I'm pretty good at, at doing lettering I uh, when I was in middle school I worked for a uh, sign maker uh, I say worked for but I was in middle school so I kind of just hung out at the sign maker shop and helped in a few different ways but the one thing that I learned was how to do lettering and how to paint it because this was in the day before a lot of computer graphics and uh, and he did a lot of hand painted stuff and so I learned hand painted lettering and how to space things out and and it's easy when you're copying off the the print there um, but I'm really happy with how this little plaque turned out it's kind of caps off the project Gives it a final look. And just because I'm proud of the lettering, I'm going to make you watch the whole thing. But yeah, so this project came across really well. This is the final bit of it. I gave it to my dad and my dad was thrilled by it. He really loved it. And, uh... And I'm really happy with it. Gave a quick dry brush. 
that will bring out those petroglyphs at the top of the, the stonework here. Ended up going in and highlighting the petroglyphs in, in black paint later on. But so here's the box. You can see the rough edges that I'm hiding with that. Get some super glue on the front piece. And then glue it in place. And there you have it. There is the book nook. I'm going to also glue in place the, uh, the title piece. But there it is on the bookshelf. The Lord of the Rings. That's how it looks. And I'm so happy with it. It looks so good tucked in there with all the books. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate you staying to the very end, seeing how the project turned out. I'm going to do some more book nooks in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.